Hello guys, today we continue the second part of the video, which is about disassembling the scooter, to see build quality and water isolation that this construction provides. As you can see, behind the plastic we don't have access to the batteries and the controller, so we can call it a first layer of water isolation, something like a splash proof layer. Here we see the second layer of isolation, which is much more serious. We see a solid cover with a rubber coating for good contact with the metal box, in which the controller and battery are located, to prevent water and moisture issues. The reason that the factories put thermal paste between the controller and the chassis of the vehicle is very useful, 
because it transfers the temperature from the controller through the chassis to avoid overheating the controller. After two layers of isolation, we have the battery also sealed with silicone and rubbers. And it is so well sealed that I believe if I drop it in water it will continue to work normally without any problem. When you buy any kind of scooter, the first thing you must check is if it is well tightened the motor shaft screws they should be tightened at least 45 newton per meter to avoid serious and expensive damage to the scooter. Also very important is to check if there is silicone insulation between the motor cover. Like in this particular motor, it normally exists as it should. The motor as you can see is of very good quality and windings have been made by a robotic arm.
The only thing that bothers me about the motor is after the winding by the robotic arm, it was simply placed inside the hub case, without any additional work to be tied somewhere the wiring of the coils. As you can see they are freely in the hub motor. After some time, I believe they will make noise from the frequency. Because the battery is very well sealed and it is too difficult to open it, I will show you other client battery which opened it himself. This battery has a charging problem as he told me. He also mentioned that the vehicle plug was broken, so we understand they may have shorted the charging wires casing a fuse to blow. Usually good BMS boards have a fuse for this case, so then we will look to find and try to fix it. As you can see the BMS is huge and very sophisticated. You can also see that it has passive balance circuit, which is very important for performance of our battery. Here we have our power input and output. Two thick wires are power output and two thin ones are for charging, which goes to a very small fuse. As you can see we have no continuity on the fuse, so we are 80% sure that this is the problem. To confirm we will connect power to the battery to be sure that there is no other issue. As you can see before the fuse we have no load, and after the fuse we have. So there we are 100% sure that this was our problem. Note. After the repair, press reset button continuously to reset the BMS. As you can see, after repair the factory charger works normally.
Okay guys, that's it for today and see you.